This isn't gonna work well. <laughs> it's fun. Sometimes he's naughty. Sometimes he's nice. But every time he's Dirt Guy. It's Dirt Guy Drive Time with your host, Dirt Guy. Hey everybody, welcome to Dirt Guy Drive Time. And a very different show than what you experienced yesterday, I believe, is what you're in store for today. Yesterday it was a bit boring, nothing going on, same as usual. And uh, today, not that day. Matter of fact, I'm um, just just to give you a little heads up. I've been running on adrenaline for like nine hours. Nine hours of adrenaline. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. First of all, if you guys remember a few months back, I made a Shakespeare episode. Uh, it was the Dirt Knight, and I am the Dirt Knight. And uh, I was waging battle against the Cobra, who shall not be named. Remember that one? Well, you know, um, ah, where do I begin? I was basically fighting one long battle today that consisted of many smaller battles. I was just engaged with the enemy uh, throughout the course of the day. Uh, so I'm just gonna give you the rundown and um, enjoy yourselves. Oh, by the way, here's a little bit more background. You know all those leadership books, like modern, like, like touchy-feely leadership books, successful CEOs and all this stuff, it's like, you know, lead with love and treat your people with respect and give them all these great things and they're going to produce and be loyal and love you. And um, while that may work uh, in some cases, it's been my experience and including presently, that's just bullshit. It doesn't work. You need to have the right people in place for that to work. When you got the wrong people in place, it just doesn't work. Instead, you have to go over to the dark side, which I'm afraid is where I'm going. Going to the dark side. You know, if you remember from the uh, the uh, Star Wars series, the uh, the dark side is, Yoda would say, it's quicker, easier, more productive. No, more seductive, whatever. It's quicker and easier to go to the dark side. Boom, oh, and it feels right. You just drift right on in. It's really hard to stay on the good side, whatever that is, the non-dark side, the gray area side. It takes a lot of work. And I've been trying to be the Jedi in this deal. The Dirt Knight is trying to be a Jedi, but he is slowly turning into a Sith Lord. Sith Lord, that's me. I'm gonna be Lord Stevius, or so. Hey, that actually was not bad, Lord Stevius. Anyway, let's move forward. Let's begin with the our, our opening uh, battle, if you will. So, um, my uh, superintendent that works for me and my, my assistant superintendent, I've got two of them, but two, two main guys. I got to work this morning and I was already unhappy with them because we're not supposed to leave the job uh, and leave anybody on the job, if you remember. And uh, I have evidence on camera that um, people were gone and I saw employees, workers, still leaving the job. Uh, kind of frosted me up a little bit and so that started, um, started the juices. So when they both got there, based on some things that happened yesterday, I got back into their office and I said, hey, I need to talk to you guys about something. I have gone to great lengths to try to build a, a team here, a little family here where, you know, I, I've got your back and not everything that happens here do we need to tell the office about, we'll handle it ourselves. And uh, I've really tried to have your back. And they all nodded, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, but you know what? I don't think you guys have my back. What? I said, yeah, you know, I, I we need to be punching out these rooms. I need to know what you're doing. And every time I get give you guys something like that, you give me pushback on it. Instead of going, okay, that's our job, let's go do it. I told them both, I said, you are an assistant superintendent and you as the superintendent for your hotel, your jobs are to go through those rooms and make sure this kind of crap doesn't happen again. I have brand new painted walls. I have one wall with wallpaper on it where nobody bothered to check to see if the freaking electrician put their crap in the right place. So we are cutting into brand new walls. 
including in my two model rooms. What the hell? You guys are supposed to have my back. It's your job to make sure that doesn't happen. If I got, I can do it. I can go out and do it. Look at the plans, look at the wall. Hey, this is messed up, fix it. But if I do all that, I don't need you. That's what I said. And not only that, one man can't do all of that. And then I looked at my assistant superintendent and I said, um, and here's something else about yesterday. And I'm not gonna call you a liar, but I'm gonna tell you this. You told me we failed an inspection. And I couldn't, I couldn't understand how we failed the inspection. So before the inspector left, I asked him what happened. He goes, uh, well, you guys, I was told you weren't ready yet. Excuse me? Yeah, you, you weren't ready yet. Uh, I didn't even look at it. Oh, okay, that's not the story I was told. I told uh, my assistant superintendent, I said, dude, that was bullshit. You were trying to tell me that they didn't do it right and so he failed us, when in reality, you called an inspection for a sub that wasn't done yet. And then you, you basically lied to me about it, is what you did. And I said, so here's a story. I need you guys to, to get a grip on this. I need you to understand something. Um, you can expect from now on for me to be a flaming asshole around here, because I don't care anymore. I'm not here to make friends. I'd like to make some, not here to make friends. I am here to support my boss who has all the confidence in the world and has given me a lot of faith and trust to get this shit done and get it done right and get it done on time and you guys aren't helping me do it. So understand something, when my director shows up here on site, he's gonna lose his mind on the condition of this job and I'm not standing in the gap for you. With that, I walked out of the room. I felt very vindicated, by the way. Then I have an elevator contractor who, uh, I won't give you that whole story, but here's the battle. He sends over something. He thinks that uh, he's getting honked over and so he wants like $25,000 in additional labor to put in the elevators. He says, I need this signed by the end of the day or I'm pulling my crew from the job. Excuse me? I said, politely, nicely. I said, hey, uh, we're reviewing this and thank you for sending over. I said, but you know, saying that if we don't sign this by the end of the day, you're gonna leave the job is inconsistent with what's written in your contract. What's written in your contract is, you'll stay and finish the damn job and we'll figure it out later. That's what's written in your contract. Because, and he, he came back and was like, oh, so sorry, we'll stay. But here he knows what I'm saying is, if you walk off the job, I'll give you a 48 hour notice. And if you don't come back, I'm hiring another MFer to do your work for you and it's coming out of your pocket. And it's in the contract. It's Article XYZ. That was another battle that I fought. Then I had another battle. The actual owner himself, Emperor Palpatine, I guess, he decides that he wants to blame one of my subcontractors for how long it takes to get uh, samples that we submit approved. It's like every other subcontractor that we've ever worked with does it in this amount of time and your guy is too slow. You need to push him. And I sent back an email saying, if you'll forgive me, sir, um, you gave us this on this day, we turned it around, you rejected it a long time after we submitted it. Then we did it quick, quick, long again. So I think it's kind of unfair, again, if you'll forgive me, to blame my subcontractor for the delays in getting this shit submitted. What I wanted to say is, why in God's name are you still picking the colors for your stucco? when I'm stuccoing the building right now. I tell you, I did battle, baby, all day. And um, I won them all, by the way. I, I think I did. Well, if I still have a job at the end of it, I think I did. Uh, boy, I got into it with some people today, including my own people. I'm stomping around there, I'm barking at crap. The drywallers say they're not gonna go into this room and do this unless their boss tells them to. I said, either you do it or I'm coming over there right now. I'm gonna grab that freaking guy and say, get into that room, get it done or get the fuck off my job. That's doing battle. That's the dirt night, people. Man, I'm still pumped up. And then, I also screwed something up. All of that, I screwed something up. I was told to look at something months ago and I looked at it, but I looked at the drawing wrong and so I thought it was okay and then, the, the subs are today and I realize I'm not okay and it's, it's you know, gonna be a big spit storm. I gotta figure out a solution. In addition to snapping a whip over my people's heads, mother effort.
So anyway, um, I, I'm just I'm just ranting. I'm just venting. You guys get to hear it. I don't know that I have a life lesson to teach you on this, or to even teach myself. But what I can tell you is this: is uh, I want to be the nice guy. I want to be the encouraging guy. I want to be the supporting, uplifting, training guy. But everybody, except my laborer, everybody that's working on my job right now is running amok. My staff, and I won't take it anymore. Um, I've been slowly ramping up to, I'm not going to take this much longer. And today I drew the line. I'm done. Report me to the boss because I, I'm, I mother effed you. Report me. And then I'll tell him why. And then you'll get fired and I won't. One final thing, I told my project engineer, I said, listen to me, when I'm barking at you like I'm barking, you can't just shrivel up and become incapacitated. You need to step up, bring the big boy ones, and work this out with me. I'm under a great deal of pressure. I don't have time to hold your hand. And then my assistant superintendent says, I said, I already told these guys this morning that from now on, I'm going to be an a-hole, period. I don't really care anymore. And my assistant superintendent, thinking he's joking, says, yeah, but we're, just, we're not going to listen to him. And I said, ha, 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 one call from me, and I've got two checks here for you tomorrow, buddy. And his smile dropped off his face, and he sat down at his desk. There it is. That's the report. Dirt night, doing battle, making it happen. Still running on adrenaline. Why did I tell you this story? I don't know. A couple of beers will probably fix it. And Cindy Brown, the queen of everything. So I will see you again tomorrow on my drive home unless I'm arrested for busting a cap in a mother. Until then, hey, just remember, may the force be with you. Bye-bye.